But yeah, here we are. The game won of the round and it seems like it was already having some kind of problems, considering the chat in the replay. Oh, also, I'm at the 15 second mark, so I will pause there. Oh, I, I've uh, forgot to pause as well, I'm at 20 seconds. Okay, so I will join you in 3, 2, 1, go. Let's go. So yeah, here we are, game number one between Justice for Telebili and Echo Turtles. The map is gonna be Deadly Reverse 10x10, 10 10, and well, it does look quite deadly if you ask me. Just look at all of this reclaim available. That is a lot of reclaim. Also, the map looks larger than it is, honestly. Yeah, that is true. It's It looks large, but the problem is that there is, well... All of these little ravines and small hills making but that basically there is nothing but a few ways to go and move around this. Yes, it seems really easy to defend the core bases. Yeah. But hey, it seems like the Raphael is gonna be the air player for the top team. Meanwhile, team Justice for Tail Billy. Once again, opting for FTX Commando to be their air player of the choice. Not to mention, once again, he's gonna be playing Aeon. I'll be right back. Okay. So, well, I'm gonna be alone here for a second. And it seems like the team Echo Turtles is going all in on the middle. We can see all of the ACUs from the human players belining for this position here. And I guess it's understandable. There's actually quite some mass in here available. Like here, look at these rocks here and the rocks out there. All this juicy mass available for the taking. And yeah, they really already saying that it was smooth. That the gameplay is all kind of smooth. Well, what can I say? At least the game was still going, unlike the previous one where I have crashed. And yeah, the map... I mean... I can see it being playable with like one or two players, but with so many players and with this economy boost for the AI, I can agree with you, Breck. The pathfinding is most likely gonna be horrible. And I don't even want to think about the pathfinding of the naval units. Which are actually being built by the wheelie, but yeah. Just trying to get a battleship out through this strait is gonna be a horrible experience. Not to mention, <laughs> if this player was to go and make navy here then, yeah. Horrible experience for the captains. And trying to cross to the other side through here, yeah. Not a good move. Still, it seems like the wheelie is gonna go and take a shot from... He's gonna take a shot at trying to go and grab the reclaim from the mid lane, but unfortunately for him, the big rocks were already scooped up, and as such, he will have to basically try getting as many rocks possible, the small ones, while trying to go and stay alive, because two ACUs are gonna be enough to go and kick his ass. Oh, it seems like the transport have been shot down by the AI forces. So, yep. There is all kinds of stuff happening around the map. And yeah, like I said, they really will have to go and watch out for the two enemy ACUs, but still, he can go and steal as much mass as humanly possible while taking some damage. You just gotta go and stay close to the water, although as I say that... There is a sneaky T1 submarine here waiting for him, so yes. They really better go and run to the other side, because on the other side we can see that Insidious Noob and Arxin can are actually two teaming Mikey, who might have somehow made the T1 PD available for himself. But the question is, how much time is it gonna buy? Because with two of enemy ACUs in here, this might prove pretty hard to actually defend. Oh my god, the man just building the little walls one after another, tanking so much damage, but thankfully Arxim got realizing what is happening, 
He's gonna go and reclaim them. So what can I say? Mr. Mikey, you made a mistake, building up the big rocks. But it seems like the team in Sidious Noob and Ark Simcat doesn't care. They're gonna go and grab the rocks by themselves, not even trying to go and kill him. After all, why would they? Zooming out, we can see that the early frigate from the wheelie is unfortunately gonna get sunk down by a few submarines from Mikey. But the other problem is the fact that, well, the top team just lost quite a lot of build power in the engineers, as we can see them being sunk down. The AIX for the left side is actually gonna go and try to grab the gun upgrade, so who knows, maybe it's actually gonna go and support Mr. FTX commando in his eight devils on the other side of the map. As we can see, that he's actually not gonna go and risk his life. He's gonna exchange one or two shots with the enemy player, and after that he's gonna go and fall back. AI for the team Echo Tartles is actually doing quite nicely in this position. Just making sure that nobody can go and cross these two points here. But yeah, I really don't like the fact that Mikey is going all in on the submarines. It just feels kind of pointless. Like, your submarines are actually not gonna be useful. There is not that much open ocean if the and with the single DN, DN1, it's, well, the submarines are all gonna get shot down, not to mention that the gladly helping AI is gonna go and provide a single torpedo bomber to actually go and help out. So with this, the wheelie can actually go and start building the destroyers from his factory, meaning that the second team will also have to go and respond on the in the same kind. Yep, the T2 upgrade is coming out, as we can see that the Salems will be produced up next by Mr. Mikey. I'm back. Hello and welcome back. Thank you. So far nothing much really happened, just rock clicking and stuff. See, uh, bottom team is fighting the AI already. Oh yes, that is true. Command is stuck or, in should I, or should I rather say that the enemy AI commander came to go and say hello to Insidious <laughs> Noob Willy and Arc Simcat. And yeah, what's worse, he's <laughs> actually equipped with the gun upgrade. It is not for afraid to use it. Yeah. It came here and it means business. And the problem is that if Arc Simcat actually doesn't dip into the water somewhere, he might be the one to die first. <coughs> So on the other side, the bottom AI seems to be do doing the same thing. Yeah, just not as eager to go and throw their ACUs in front. Cool. Meanwhile, FDX Commando just chilling behind the wall. Just ACU hidden, looking at everything from the high ground. Go being like, go on, go get him AI, I'm gonna watch him. Tyrion. Meanwhile, the AI is killing Maxis actually, and seeing a nota. Well, oh. I don't see it. Uh, the, on top. Oh, yeah, you're right. I just didn't expect it to be so deep inside. Oh my god, did I just get a double kill on the Maxis with a single bomb? Oh boy. And that's what hit to Maxis. <laughs> yeah, that's actually crazy. Like and it's actually gonna go and look at the AI, it's just... If it actually gets one more bomb off, it's gonna be fucking drastic. Oh no, it's gonna get shot down, but still, it was amazing all in by the AI with that little nota. Going for the double maxes instead of single yeah. ones. It was surprisingly su successful with that. Yeah.
But Otherwise, yeah, the AI is really pushing hard, like really, and Tony just unable to do anything about that. Oh, yeah. never mind. It seems like the single T2PD is gonna be enough to scare away the enemy seal. <laughs> so yeah, after a small laser tickling, the AI is gonna go back to its own part of the map. And oh god, Ark, Ark Simcat, please don't go outside. Don't go outside the water. There's an angry bunch of Auroras waiting for you. <laughs> he could start reclaiming, and that's what he does. But he is being torpedo bombed. The AI is eager to kill him. Yeah. Although, thankfully, the other AI is actually providing some swift with support. Not to mention, FTX Commander also coming in here with the gunships and the interceptors to go and help him out. But yes. <laughs> look at the AI. <laughs> I think it forgot that Auroras are not equipped with the torpedoes. Yeah, and the, the, it's really eager to kill much, but I don't think it's gonna be successful. Yeah, because thankfully, FTX have the hand on the pulse. And oh my god, the Spectre's gunship is just laying waste to the enemy Auroras. Wow, they have so many kills. 23, 17. Yeah, a beautiful showcase of just how powerful the Spectre gun should be through its AoE. Especially versus enemies. Prime seems to be a messing the navy in mid and just... And wait, it seems like my connection is dead again. Oh no. What the hell? I'm sending 40 megabytes per second to Twitch. What? I'm sorry, I'm gonna go and check the output and other stuff. Because this is not right. That is just not right. Let me check the task manager. Okay, it seems it's fine right now, but what the hell is wrong with this connection today? Meanwhile, the bottom team just killed both AIs at the same time, and the pond. I don't know, it seems like we're actually quite ahead for some reason. Me? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. spoiler. I mean, what the AI are clearly dead because there's just so many Ilshavo and Obsidians here that they can do nothing about that. Well, I stopped at 12.11, you can tell me when you get there. Okay, oh, 12.11, I'm on minute 11 something. I guess it's because I'm streaming, so my CPU is slower of the game or something. Hmm, maybe. Weird those sim speeds same. And I'm caught up. Alright. Just as I can see a big hover army of blazes trying to go and push there on the left side. <coughs> Meanwhile, farms is a massing navy, I think he's just gonna wait for the critical mass. Yeah, I mean, he's playing UEF, he cannot basically kite back or anything. He had to go and get a one nice fight and call it a day. Otherwise, he would just be taking a lot of damage from the kiting back destroyers from the Cyber Navy. Though the result of killing both the AIs is uh, that the highest rated player got the basis of their... Um, yeah, that is true. Yeah. As we can see, Leo actually having both of those bases. Oh, um, surprisingly, he still doesn't have that much echo. Only 150 mass per second. That's true, because uh, they only <laughs> he only got uh, T1 nexus from the AI. Yeah. I mean, AI doesn't care. AI have its own cheats, so who cares about maxes and upgrades? True, it was making so much progress. Yep, until he decided to go and try killing Ark Simcat. <laughs> Unsuccessfully at that. Yes. But he also, Jake? chat, please say if the stream is actually fixed right now or not. Yeah. FTX seems to be skipping T3 air eh, for some reason, instead of going just... Uh... Swift wins at the moment. 
Meanwhile, uh, Raphael already has like eight ASFs. Oh yeah, field. and they're actually gonna go and try to go and catch the enemy Spectre's gunships. And yeah, catch them they will. Seems a bit odd to me at this stage of the game. And he's still not planning to transition, it seems. I mean, I feel like FTX was basically just going for the early little air to make sure that none of his teammates are gonna die because when he was spamming those Swifties and gunships, the situation on the right flag was looking actually quite dire with the enemy AI just going all in. That is true. Though, um, at some point you should. Transitioning, I think. I mean, I fully might... agree with that. Not going for a T3 year is gonna be a big mistake. Well, you Unless... might get trouble. <laughs> yeah. Unless you can sum up the world map, but it's not gonna happen at this point of the game. And Arxingat, he's feeling very, very adventurous. If you look at the right side of the map. Uh, that's uh, Donny. Oh, wait, actually. Yeah, that's Donny, actually. I mean, they have similar colors. <laughs> yeah. Donny is just slightly bit darker. I mean, considering the fact that they do not have any air, I would be very scared to do that. Yeah, I mean, it's not even about the air. The man doesn't even have a single flag with him. <laughs> exactly. He's just marching straight in with a bunch of engines and the ACO of Gunner Brain. Oh, there is some air going, uh, some flex coming in. And already gunship to respond. Yep. But the problem is that FTX commander cannot actually go and take those air fights. Because while he have a slightly more air unit, the big problem is that the ASF are just so much better than Swift Winds. <laughs> the AI, if it's sake, enemy has T3 air. Watch out, FTX. <laughs> wow, that's actually funny. They also, the good guy AI, making sure that he doesn't <laughs> lose air. Raphael seems to be uh, using the opportunity and building a strat. I mean, that is a good choice, but I don't think it can actually deal much damage here. No, probably not, but he will scare off the ACU. Donny. Oh yeah, actually, that is true. He can actually just scare the ACU of Donny. Okay, the first pack is actually finally joining the AC of Insidious. Seems a bit odd that he has not a single shield killed with him. I mean, he's playing Seraphim, so... Oh, he just hit the T3 stage, so he might be getting the shields in some time. Okay, but he's not even trying to dodge the Strat Bomber. He's just yeah. taking everything at his face. Meanwhile, the mid fight just going full. Unfolding. Yeah, it seems to be going quite well for the top team. As Farmslet, you made the mistake of actually trying to use the UEF Navy. Poor man. Never yeah, had smart <laughs> Smartly redirected all his hover to the, to the middle. And yes, it seems like it's actually gonna work out, because just look at this yellow locust, all swarming up and ready to devour the enemy navy. Now all air is coming by FTX, but uh, Raphael seem, seems to be No, he's scared, also but... gonna go in. No, never mind, he's gonna just fall back. I mean, I definitely feel he could go and take the fight here. Considering that he had the support from the flak units, although no more. For sure, but I don't think it's it's worth it. Yet. I mean to be honest, taking the fight right now is pretty good because you have ASF going up versus Swift Winds, so yeah. Or oh, never mind, this is the worst possible moment to go and fight. Just when the cruisers have been finished, he's going for the air fight. He's still gonna go and win it because, like I said, ASF are just so much better than the Swift Twins. But he's yes. still gonna go and lose uh, quite a few tanks. I mean, ASF, due to the fact that the cruiser was there, already 4,000 must killed on it, so yeah. The cruiser was feasting, and it seems like the st strat also gonna die. So yeah, another big W for the cruiser. <laughs> cruiser is already 5k mass kills. Yep. All the reclaim is gonna go 
the hand to the hands of the bottom team. Mm, it might, although actually the submarines from Mr. Leo might go and buy some time. Oh sure. no, never mind. I forgot that Aeon and Seraphim actually have hovering on their engineers, so yeah. It's oh, only yeah. the lo loser Cybran and loser UEF which have the <laughs> Engineers, which can get basically get killed by everything. So yeah, even <laughs> they, don't, they, they don't even have a top gun. Yeah, such unfortunate. But yeah, I'm not really sure about this base hit by Donny. It feels like a small mistake. Don't you agree? Which, which base? The one to the left side near the middle, where he basically made a bunch of TMD and stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, it feels like a waste of resources, to be honest, trying to go and build a beachhead here. Honestly, that's um, it's a bit debatable. Of course, you can support your, effect, your, your, your navy with some hava and quick reclaim. But it is a lot of investment. Yeah, and even more so when the reclaim is mostly on the side of the bottom two. Yeah. I'm not sure, but it does look like a mistake, definitely. <laughs> the both AI commander seems to be stuck within their units. <laughs> Is the pathfinding hell that the break was actually speaking about before? <laughs> that might it's be. It's really it. a shame because it seems like the ACU for the Drew is really powerful. The shield upgrade and double gun, yeah. That would be no, that's really just good range. front line. That's just range, for some reason he didn't upgrade the speed at all. Oh yeah, yeah. that's the double range, sorry. If I don't know that. But yeah, what I love is the AI actually using a bunch of the mobile missile launchers on the left flank to go and punish the base building tendencies of the Russian team. So it seems end. like the middle is gonna get worn back by the top team, which is interesting. <laughs> it looks like the AI uh, is starting finally to make some progress with the MMLs. Yep. I mean, the MMLs have been boosted considerably, though, so finally they are useful. They can break through some shields and also can kill the TMD quite effectively if you amass enough of them. Yes, I think it's a very, very big change. And you see them used so so much more frequently now. <coughs> now the middle seems to be a stalemate again. Yep. Though Farms has a battle cruiser soon, very soon. I know it's actually out for me. Oh, oh yeah, I was running on minus one because no, <laughs> because I was ahead. <laughs> Rest in peace. I'm at minute twenty-one and twenty-five seconds. Alright. So yeah, basically I am at the moment where the enemy navy is finally trying to go and kill the battle cruiser. As it seems like the top team is gonna throw basically everything they have to go and try to deal with it. Or maybe not, because for some reason, while Leo is trying to go and kill the battle cruiser, the Salems for Mikey are just gonna go and fall back. That is odd. Yeah, seems like a small miscommunication happening. But Although yeah, he, he might be scared like he doesn't of have enough shields. Yeah, he might be scared of this hover, which is a real Understand threat. Understand, of course. Yeah. And the thing that makes hover even more dangerous is the fact that the destroyers are basically what? Exodus class and Salems, which don't deal so well with the T1 and T2 hover spam. True, that is true. And they cannot use it, they have to insane torpedoes on them as well. Yeah. Not to mention, the pathfinding being an absolute cluster mark. Exactly, and you cannot even spam a lot of frigates just to deal efficiently with the, with the power Yeah, spam. frigates would be basically killing pathfinding here. No way to move them past this middle here. 
exactly. That's why you see no, no players building them. Yeah, it's covered all time, baby. But hey, it seems like Ark Simcat is also doing quite some progress on the right side with some MMLs, like himself. <laughs> it seems that uh, uh, Fix Commander finally transitioned to T3. Well, took him a while. This is what, minute 23? Apparently it was the right move since it was not punished at all. Yeah. Although he actually gonna pay off for that with a slightly worse economy than his opponent as Rafal is on nearly 190 miles and Navy Fix Commander on 170. Yeah, and he's also going for Ares. And the AI is gonna use a strat bomber to keep on sniping random T1, I mean the T2 Maxis. <laughs> so yeah, for some reason the Seraphim AI really loves to use, keep on using the bombers. Yeah, it's very convenient. Yeah, and the other AI is actually spamming the T3 torpedo bombers on suicide missions. <laughs> And there is the T3 switch as Mike is actually finally going for the Galaxy class battleship. Oh yeah. But I'm afraid it might be actually too little and too slow because the hover spam is just so dangerous here. Like exactly. Ark Simcat and Dominoop are just putting all of the resources they have into hover spam, so yeah. I think putting some TTPD on the islands would be great to hinder the hover. Oh yeah, those islands are actually quite flat, so... T2PD would be great here, but the problem is that the T2PD would quite easily die to the enemy navy. Oh, that's true. And with the navy being unable to hold the line, I am afraid that the PDs would be basically donezo in no time. A big rushed by the torpedo bombers from Mr. Rafael, but unfortunately they are not gonna deal any damage at all to the Neptune class as the battle cruiser is not only protected by the teak shields, but also the result of flak coming out from Mr. Ark Simcat. <laughs> not to mention all the cruisers. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about them. But it's basically one hell of a green fest and it seems like with the naval fight being everything that the top team is concentrating on, the AI on the left side is just gonna walk straight into the enemy bases. Just look at this train of the units. Yeah, the situation starts to become quite dire for the top team. They lost a lot of map control and reclaim consequentially. And yeah, right now Pathfinding is gonna rear its ugly head. Trying to move the battle cruisers through the straits here in the middle is gonna be a horrible choice. Basically no way to dodge or anything, but it seems like the enemy team is gonna have the exact same problem. There is nowhere to run, nowhere to fall back and the angry blazes and yenzes from Ark Simcat and Dolino are just gonna hit the battleships and destroyers in the ass. Yeah, um, Mikey throwing up some desperate PDs. Oh I'm yeah, but aware. I don't think you wanna be making them on the T1, you wanna be making the T2 ones. I don't think he has a choice. Oh, okay, oh yeah, you are actually right, because the T2 engine is belong to Leo. Oh my, it seems like actually FTX Commando is just abusing the air, even though... Rafael have quite a few ASF, FTX Commander is just basically allowed to go and do whatever he wants with the wrestlers. Yeah, it seems that he's, he missed the opportunity to snipe all the wrestlers. I mean, he uh, could still go and snipe them because FTX Commander units are just basically sitting behind. But I also still love that the ASF from the AI player are also gonna go and join the wrestlers to go and protect them. That's true. But then again, the wrestlers cannot do too much damage. 
because of all the AI that can be thrown out so quickly with the build power available. Man, the AI is already on 5,000 mass killed on the strat bomber. Wow. He's just running around killing random maxes all over the map. This is the most efficient bomber of an AI I've seen. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for some reason the Seraphim bombers are just so much better micro. Or the Ahuasas and stuff like Did you see the bombs by Ahuasa by the Seraphim AI or not? Yeah, I've seen some. Um, but they're kind of pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it's not even about the targeting, but the way they basically just drop them. They just throw us balls from like one kilometer away. Yes. They don't even get in the sum range. Yeah, it's kind of weird too. Look at this, this bomber is going nuts. <laughs> Already killing 7.5k mass. Yeah. Right now, just taking some damage from the flag for some reason. While it just was unsure which way it wants to go, but it seems like the other AI is also gonna <laughs> enjoy the fun and join with its own shocker bomber. <laughs> Double trouble. And the worst thing is that the AI is actually still trying to use its own ASF to cover for those strat bombers. So it seems like Raphael is just unable to do anything about that. So I guess you have better problems, known as the restaurants going through the middle. Just look at all of them. And again, it's uh, it's hard to, to tell if they can actually do anything. With all the build power available and shielding. I mean, to be honest, I don't think it will even matter because while the TMD is there in the base belonging to Donny, it seems like the cruisers from farms that they are actually fully capable of going through them. Although Mikey I'm just sorry. gave up his base at this point. Oh yeah, he did. But I don't really understand why is Mikey just pulling in here with his ACU going straight to the middle of the enemy Navy force. He does have torpedoes, can snipe some cruisers, I guess. I mean, that is effort. true, but the problem is that FTX commander have the air control. So he's just gonna get sniped by the torpedo bombers. True, but it's gonna take a while. He does not have a lot of them. Oh, we have the Summit class battleship actually hitting the field finally. Oh god, oh I, I say finally, but it hit nearly 9,000 mass killed already. What? Yes, Farm he actually made Summit and make a second one here. Yeah, I just see it pulling up. <laughs> and, even and he just made the third one. I don't know, it seems like the man knows something that we are not privy to. I wonder what the range it. And wow. yes, there goes the Mikey. <laughs> Just in time. Killed out the Hava as well. Yes, he did some damage, it's fine. I mean, I feel like having actually a player here would be better for the macro. True. Like leaving all of those bases in the hands of... Oh no, Mikey already gave up his base, like we said. What am I even saying? Yeah, there is not much to macro it anyway. There's not much left, honestly. Yeah, it's basically a survival game at this point. And let's see what the team Echo Turtles actually have in up their sleeves. But I don't see anything. No nuke, no T3R, nothing at all. They just have a few ASF circling around here and there. Yes, but the only the only way out at this point. Maybe a game ender or a couple of three artists. Yeah, so maybe a sniper. No, they cannot snipe. The Leo is the best player and he's actually going for Aras, so yeah. Look at this. Look at the left. Look at what the players are typing. They have three air factories on top of each other. What? Wait, where exactly? Uh, on the AI base. On the left. Oh, wait, this on is the left. funny. i never seen that before. <laughs> oh my god. They are playing Yenga. <laughs> what? How does this work? <laughs> okay. Can someone explain how is this supposed to work? This is crazy, man. I've never seen this. Wait, this I, is... I don't know. This is some kind of a new HQ model or something for Seraphim. Yeah. This is just some coming up with the three levels. <laughs> Each level <laughs> adds another factory on top of it. I wouldn't mind this, this being in the models. 
I mean, it actually looks kind of cool and gives some verticality to the game, so... Yeah. I don't know, Jeep or Balthazar go and take note of this Implement beautiful this right now. implementation of AI. <laughs> oh, you know what happened? I think that they basically... When you make a factory, right, when you upgrade to HQ, the normal factory is supposed to despawn, just like the T2 HQ later on, right? But oh, instead yeah. of despawning, it just spawned another factory on top of it. So each time yeah. the AI was actually upgrading the factory, it was just spawning another one on top of it. Yeah, that's what I was, what I was thinking too. I wonder if they can, if it can build from these factories. Uh, no, it's not building from those factories uh, below it. It's just using the HQ. So it seems like it's working as intended, but looks quite silly. This is funny. Also, it seems like AI is saying that it has spotted some nuclear launch, uh, launchers, but was it AI and how does it know? Here is this. It's under construction. Oh, okay, so I guess that's kind of a cheating because the AI for the top team is already dead, so it cannot s spot this stuff. Hold on. But yeah, it really feels like it cheated when the AI just basically goes and say that. Watch out, an enemy team is starting to build the nuke. No, no, it's the bottom AI and it's spotted. Wait, how is the bottom AI? Yeah, it's the yellow AI for me. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's... Yeah, but it's spotted the nuke launcher for the top team or not. Yeah, but... If you hover above it, you can see that it was... Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually. Yeah, but I mean that it's actually kind of a cheat, because even if you, as a player, right, spot it but don't see it, you will have the AI actually go and say that, watch out, the enemy is making a nuke. True, that is questionable. Although I guess if you one of the players actually saw it, then there would be a lot of pings happening or something, so yeah. There's one ping. Mm -hmm. This nuke does not have a lot of potential, even if it successfully nukes anything at all. I mean, it can nuke the navy, but otherwise, what? The bots have already its own SMDs, from what I can see. Players will not not have any trouble recovering from the nuke. Yeah. Although, actually, I don't see any SMDs covering the players. But a single nuke is not gonna be enough to basically go and sway the game. No, definitely not. And yeah, even though it seems like there was an Anitota made by Mr. Leo on the right side of, I should say, two chickens, it seems like they're gonna be unable to do anything really useful. Because yeah, I, don't think, uh, <laughs> I don't think he can help himself. This is his calling. This is what he does. It's Zaspert. He's known for that. Ah, uh, really? The chicken maid? Yes. Is the basic the chicken factory, but yeah, I still don't think this is the choice here because there's a GC and a bunch of heavy tanks for Ark, Simcat, and Donny. Not to mention, wait, it's a chicken, not a GC. Sorry for that. But yeah, there is also a bunch of restaurants which are gonna be really hard to go and go past. Definitely, and there's not too much AA. Actually, there is a lot of AA. What am I saying? Oh yeah, it's basically all AA. Oh, it's only chickens and AA. That's all it is. I guess that's one way to go and make a unit mix. Yeah. Honestly, we uh, when our team played against theirs, it was really hard for me to counter this with Restos. I mean, when, yeah, it might be hard to counter, but on the other hand, it's chickens and they basically, if you have more than a single one in the same spot, they can basically self-destruct itself. Actually, they can't. Oh well, sure. They don't oh damage, damage friendly units anymore. No, they do. No, they don't. Really? You sure about yeah. that? It was changed and... It was this kind of a sneaky change. Because I wasn't aware of it until Nugget said so. I mean, I, I am aware of the fact that there were some balance talks about it, but... Even just a few games ago I saw... Sorry, I mean the last tournament I saw the chickens do, do the team damage. So. Yes, it is very recent change. Very. 
I mean, I'm not sure if I really agree with it, but it makes the chicken actually a little bit more usable. Well, it makes it very powerful in my opinion. Because now they can actually stack up before they couldn't. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's a good chance. Because otherwise trying to play with the chickens was like playing with fire. That's true. Yeah, like you lose a single one and suddenly you're just taking so much area of effect damage that it's ruining your whole push. Yeah. But I, then I, again, I, I guess they had the Aquasa. I would like to know how it pans out if it's, you know, if you take a... If you look for, uh, for a while, how the balance will do. But uh, it seems like the T3 Navy from Perhaps that is actually paying off. Like the summit's dealing massive damage to the remnants of the base belonging to Tony. Yeah. I think starting to appeal. Uh, well, they're quitting finally. Yeah. I don't. I don't see any any way out for the top team honestly at this point. Yep. <laughs> FTX saying it's a best of three, so feel free to quit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, for some reason it's the Russian team that is always going to go and keep on playing. I guess here comes the nuke. And it's going straight for the base belonging to... Ark Simcat for whatever the reason. I guess they have seen that the SMD for FTX Commando and for Wheelie is really heavily assisted so they are not trying to risk it. And instead yeah. gonna go for the simple and, well, a good choice of erasing all of the hover. That's true, and it also killed 100, exactly 100 KMS. Wow. Perfect calculations by our dual gap friends. <laughs> so Donny is, uh, is Vesh, right? Um, yes. Leo is Sasport and uh, Raphael is Iron Eye. And who's Mikey? I have no clue, honestly. <laughs> I mean, I guess we can go and take a look at the Rainbow Cup bracket. It should be actually written down who is who. Or at least True. who are the players in the team. I'll so we can look. just make a guesses depending on the rating. It's Tron. It's oh, Tron. yeah. That makes sense. So the full-on Russian team being fielded out there. But actually, it seems like the air position might be in favor for Rafael at this moment. He have 200 ASF compared to Mr. FTX Commando. Sporting 100... Okay, never mind. It's 100 restorers, so I guess it's 50-50, depending on the micro. Yeah. Rafael has been doing quite well with his scaling on this tournament. The only thing um, that he does not appear to <laughs> abuse his advantages. I mean, I think like he's just afraid to go and throw it because the moment they lose air, their chances of winning are just going to hell, so yeah. That's true. He's just here to go and try to make sure that the game goes as long as possible for his other teammates. Oh, and yeah. The the also, I think he might be afraid of basically flying over the flak or, or the cruisers, getting baited or even the enemy AI joining the force. Because when you will look at the base, belong to the AI, there is just so many ASF flying right there. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the enemy AI would be actually capable of soloing the Rafael Air Force alone. Yeah, maybe. Actually. Oh my goodness, it seems like... Uh, yeah. Zasport make a big mistake. He's basically sent all of his chicken to death as the... little MAA got just picked off one after another. A horrible yeah. blunder, and what's more, this leaves open the wall right side flank for the chickens belonging to Donino to just go in. So honestly, the chickens didn't even have to go and join the fight here because we can see the Sumits joining the fray. Next nuke coming out for me. Um, it's not here that yet. Oh, no, never mind, it's actually launching. The animation was just a tad bit slow. And at this time, it's going for the base belonging to no one. It's gonna go and kill the Navy. I don't agree with it. 
Yeah, but at this point, what, the, what else do you need, honestly? I mean, yeah, that is true. You already nuked the base belonging to Arxing, and so nuking it again is not really a good choice. And wait, what was that explosion here on the right side? Yeah. Let Donny die. <laughs> wait. Oh, yes, Donny died. He was right there with AC. I guess he just forgot that enemy also had chickens. He forgot he's going up versus Zasport. But yeah, it seems like the chickens might buy some time for LL, but not enough for them to just basically make the difference here. Yeah, looks like the top team is throwing out the GGs. Yeah, just as Willy was saying, be right back. They're like, no, we are not gonna wait for you. <laughs> but yeah, it seems like this is gonna be the game. So game one going to team justice for Tilly Yes. You hear that, Jeep? If they win the Rainbow Cup, I want my fucking Billy back. Exactly. This uh, stacked HQ too. Okay, so let's take a look if the other game actually ended or not. And please, no spoilers.